as I get closer to this to this um, purple post, I want you to keep an eye on what this is doing over here. Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today I find myself here in Norwalk, Connecticut at the Sono Collection. And I've got my wife's Model Y over here, Junebug. And I'm here today to warn you about this car and any other Tesla that is vision only, because without the sensors that have historically been in this car, you very well likely may hit a pole like this, which is exactly what my wife did, and she feels heartbroken. Very minor damage, but nonetheless, I wanna show you what happened. I don't think this is her fault. I mean, she hit it, but if Tesla had the sensors in the front bumper, or perhaps a front camera in the front bumper, I don't think this would have happened. And now this is gonna cost us over $2,000. Yeah, you can see where it got bent right here. It's a very tiny little tap, but um, yeah. So here's just a, a typical Mazda. It looks like maybe a CX-9 or something like that. And you'll see these little sensors right here, that uh, these round little sensors, there's uh, a few of them. And what they do is they actually detect whether or not you're going to crash into something like a wall. And Tesla eliminated those sensors and rely completely on vision only now, which is a little bit of a disturbing problem. And we're gonna get into that issue and one other today. I'm uh, Stick with me, I'm gonna show you a couple things to really be careful of when you're driving your Tesla. So one other situation you'll see over here, we've got a relatively low garage door with a beautiful, shiny, nasty metal bracket. And what do we have down here? A gorgeous Tesla Model Y. This happens to be my wife's June bug. But what you'll see right here is a little scratch. Chipped away the paint and there's a little scratch right there. And the reason is because we did not set the height of this rear lift gate prior to pulling it into this garage. And uh, it's a brand new garage door. And the other one didn't have that latch there, so we didn't have a, a problem. But they just put in a new garage door the other day. And so when we lifted this up, it smacked into, you know, you hold it with your hand there. And then it'll it'll pull back, but it actually smacked into that uh, that bracket right there, and it's not good. So there's a little bit of a little bit of situation right here. So the way to the way to actually fix this problem is what you can do is you can push this up manually with your hand as far as you want it to go, and I think that's. That's pretty good. I may come down just a little bit more in case we don't go in quite as far, just to be conservative. Maybe like right about there. And then all you have to do is push this little button until you about three seconds. Now listen, you hear the little chime. And once you hear the chime, then you know that it has, it has leveled off at the highest setting or whatever setting you want, custom. So now, the trick is, when you open this, I hope it works here. Let's see. There it does. It stops. Instead of smacking in, it stops. So just be careful out there. Um, I'm actually going to set my, my, model, my Model X here as well. So the Model X, it goes up to about there but I actually want it to go higher. So I'm just gonna push it all the way up and then I'm gonna hold this button. And now we've got it all the way up. So now what I can do is when I close it, all right, it closes. Now let me open it and see how high it goes. There, it goes all the way up, extends all the way up, perfect. So many of you may or may not know, does that make sense? Some of you may or may not know 
that Tesla eliminated sensors in the bumpers of their cars. And they're relying on a single camera in the front to be able to detect how far the car is away from an object in the front of it um, or on the side of it or in the back of it. It's using all of the cameras. They call it vision based only. And it's been pretty controversial because, you know, you got to wonder, like, how much money is Tesla really saving by going to a 100 percent vision only car? And what are they giving up in terms of accuracy of collecting information? And, you know, there's a there is there's a lot of evidence to show that having more sensors is better, whether it's the little round sensors you see in the bumpers or it could be radar or it could be LIDAR or it could be just more cameras strategically located, all kind of taking in the different data and the software, the computer processing all that information to give you the driver better information. So I'm right now driving over to the Sono Mall where my wife, Kathy, I'm now in her Model Y. This is June Bug. This is a 2023 Model Y long range. It's got about 8,500 miles on it. And she got it last June, hence the name June Bug. Whoa, bumpy, bumpy. And she was parking this Model Y at the mall. And I want to go see exactly what what the situation looked like. But she pulled in and gently, ever so gently, smashed into a pole. And now we've got damage to the front. It's actually like the front bumper, but it's part of the hood of the car. Very minor, but it's disturbing. And she's upset about it. And I feel bad that it happened to her. And, um, you know, I could tell you that in my ID4, I remember backing up once and trying to pull into a um, an Electrify America charging uh, station, CCS charging station. And I was backing up and the car slammed on the brakes. I thought I hit the charging unit and I didn't. I got out and I was about a foot away. I think I, I think I had that on film. Some of you may remember that. It freaked me out because it jammed on the brakes right away. And this Tesla doesn't have any functionality like that at all. So everyone who says, oh, Tesla's got the best safety features. I mean, there's one example where the Volkswagen ID4, and I think the Ionic 5 also had that similar, uh, had that, has that similar technology in, in some very inexpensive cars as well. So it's not just limited to electric vehicles. This kind of technology is is out there but because this car is relying completely on vision only my wife hit a post here at the sono mall the sono collection and uh, i put in i put it took pictures of it i sent it over to tesla and tesla service they came back within 14 hours 15 hours and said it was going to be $1,900 worth of damage. They had to replace the whole front bumper. They're going to have to get a whole new front bumper, whole front fascia, and have it painted, and then um, replace it. And this is Mount Kisco. And then a day later, so I made the appointment. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not putting it in for insurance or anything like that because it's just a, it's just such a, a minor little ding. And, um, you know, it's not, not going to be big money or anything like that, but it's one of those things that you just feel bad about. I'll show, I'll show you the damage here. And, um, anyway, the next day Tesla called it, called me back or sent me a, a message to say, yeah, we don't do that kind of work anymore here. They just said, we're not doing it. They're not going to fix it. So you're on your own, go figure it out. And I was a little bit kind of surprised that Tesla was turning away the work. I mean, even if they were to outsource it to a body shop and make a, a few bucks on that, you know, one might think that 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 would be something they might want to might do, but they just said, no, we're not doing the work. So I have to figure out where to actually get this um, fixed. Now, I am in the Sono Mall right now. And, uh, almost hit a guy there. No, kidding. It was, it wasn't that close. Uh, I scared him a little bit, but 
these parking lots are crazy. Now, that when I go up this ramp, it usually squeals. Listen, see if we can. No, it didn't squeal this time. Okay. They put paint down on this, and you can hear all the cars jamming. Uh, let's go up to the next level. Looks like people are out shopping already. That could bode well for the Christmas season. Um, but what Kathy explained to me was that she was pulling into a parking spot here. And there was a post that, I mean, she saw it, but she was just inching up. And she ever so delicately hit the post. The car didn't break. And while the car probably was showing some sort of um, some sort of indicator that the post was there, um, she hit it. So I'm, I'm wondering exactly where the spot was that she, that she was. I'm going to, I'm going to FaceTime her and ask her because I want to, I want to go and, and show you all where it was. I'll be back. Okay. So now here we are at the Sono collection and you can see that these metal posts are here. Now this is not the exact spot that Kathy was in. She was downstairs a couple of uh, levels below, but it's super busy here today. So I came up here to the fourth floor and I'm just gonna try and reenact exactly what happened. So as I get closer to this, to this um, purple post, I want you to keep an eye on what this is doing over here. And and it gives some interesting indications. Now, keep in mind that the camera is up here that is actually looking at that post, and there's a solid wall behind it. And the question is, is the camera reading the wall, or is it able to distinguish that metal post right there? And so let's look at it and see what it does. You'll see it, it sees two cones here. It sees a garbage pail here and a garbage pail there, which is actually accurate. And it sees a cone here and a cone there, but they're actually metal posts. So this is actually quite interesting to me. So as I pull up towards the metal post, let's see what happens. All right, I'm pretty far away still. Now we're starting to get, all right. Now it's telling me that I am 30 inches, 28 to 30 inches away from that metal post. Now let's go measure that. Let's go look at that and see how far away we are. It said 30 inches, 30 inches. I mean, that's a good six feet away. So that is extremely inaccurate. And again, keep in mind that the camera is right up in there where it's, it's measuring. Uh, this is hardware four and it's telling me we're 30 inches away from that metal post. Mm, not good. Not good. All right, let's get back in and see what happens. All right. Now, we're going to ease up. All right. And... Now it's beeping at me, 26 inches, 28 inches, 24 inches. Now it doesn't say anything except it kind of sees that there's a cone, garbage pail, another cone and another garbage pail. You can see that there, but it's not indicating that I am supposed to stop. And as I keep going and keep inching up, Let's see what happens. I don't want to hit it again. Okay, now, what is that there? The cone just turned upside down, but it's not, oh, look at that. It's, it's sort of going back and forth. Let me just inch up just a little bit more. Okay, now, you can see that the cones went upside down, but there's no audible sound. Now let's see how close we are. Let's see how close we are. So there was no, so there was no audible indication that we're super close to anything here. And you can see that we're about, this is about a foot away. And you can see where, hopefully you can see where, yeah, you can see where it got bent right here. It's a very tiny little tap, but um, yeah. 
and you can see the hump in it right there. So again, this was not the exact spot it happened, but I'm just showing you. Now I'm gonna go a little bit closer. I'm gonna inch up just a little bit more and see if we get any additional indicators. All right. I hope I don't hit this thing. Just a little, just a little. I don't really wanna go much closer, but there is no audible indication. Now what you can see here is you can see this yellow line going up and around like that. And I'm gonna see how close we are to that pole right now. This my friends is a problem with this vision only system. Well, we're probably eight inches eight inches away. I'm gonna go a little closer and see what happens. Just a little bit closer. Let's see. I don't wanna go much closer than that. I mean, I'm super close right now. There is no audible sound. The car is not telling me to brake. It's, it's got an upside down cone right there it's lost the gar. Well, there's the garbage pail there, and I guess the hint of the garbage pail over there. But uh, this is a problem. This is a real problem. Now, I inched up just a little bit more. Let me see how close I am. I'm not going to go any closer. I don't want to damage it anymore. But you can see what the problem is here. This car is not telling you to stop, and we're that close to a post. You got to be really careful, folks. Really careful. All right, so there you have it. As we pull out of the Sono Mall, you know, you can't you can't really point a finger at them for being at fault, but um, you know, I think you just it's just a lesson for all of us that these vision-based Teslas, you got to be really careful in close in quarters, um, whether it's your garage or a parking spot, because this camera here in the center does not do a good enough job in my opinion, which I think I just showed in recreating that, it does not give you fair warning that you're about to hit something. And that something was a solid purple. I think it's her, the one she hit was yellow. I don't know if that makes it any better. It was just as solid as the purple one. Anyway, be careful out there. Watch the height adjustment on your lift gate, no matter what car it is. All cars have that sort of memory feature. It's just not Teslas or EVs. But with respect to the uh, hitting of poles, um, I would be really careful. And look at what we have here, a Model X in ultra red. Gotta love that. It's my lucky day. It's not my car, it's not my wife. Somebody else got one. So anyway, everyone have a good day. Thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care.